Hello lovelies and <clears throat> sorry, welcome to the very first video in my new series, video series on becoming a network designer. I'm Hannah Visa, I'm your host for today and always and I'm so so glad that you're joining me today. This is my very first YouTube live video and it feels kind of strange sitting in front of my laptop instead of this little thingy here where I am quite used to doing like Instagram stories and Instagram live. So I'm hoping that I remember to look at the camera so that you can actually see me talk to you. Yeah. So if you've been watching my channel for a bit or and or you're following me on Instagram, you know quite a bit about me. But just in case you don't, let me start this video with one, a little disclaimer, and two, a little intro of myself. Disclaimer is that um, it might happen that the doorbell rings because I'm expecting someone to come um, to clean the apartment. So if that happens, I might need to stop the live video and then there will be a part two of the live video as well. So there's that. And then number two, the intro. So as I said earlier in the beginning, I'm Hannah Lisa. I am usually based in Berlin where I live and work. I run two slash three companies that are all based around fiber. And one of them is a publishing company for network design books. The other one is a project label company. And the third one is a creative coaching um, agency where I coach creative entrepreneurs that are mostly active in the fiber space, such as network designers and yarn dyers and the like. I am really, 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 really excited to start this video series. And I want to talk in this video about what I want to do with it and why I decided to do it. I want to start off with saying that I am not a professional network designer. Maybe yet? I don't know, maybe I'm on the way. I hope I'm on the way. <laughs> so this is not a how-to video. If you want to see how-to videos, especially around running a creative business, I highly suggest you check out my Patreon. I will include a link in the down bar below to my Patreon. This is where you can access all of my how-to videos on how to um, how to start a creative business, how to promote your creative business is very specific. This is not that. This is a real time life and unedited, non polished, behind the scenes view at my first steps into network design. It's nothing that has anything to do with any other part of my business, um, other than that, I'm hoping to be able to better cater to my coaching needs of the knitwear designers because I understand a little bit better um, all the behind the scenes of creating knitwear pattern. But honestly, these videos are for fun, as is the knitwear design right now. So this is what these videos will all be about. I recently started designing knitting patterns for fun. Um, and I thought it would be a great idea to just take you along on this journey with me and talk in more or less real time about what I'm designing right now, things that I'm discovering, um, also maybe answer any questions that you might have around knitwear design or things that I am doing with regards to knitwear design, and just share a little bit of the behind the scenes of um, the first steps into this for me new creative um, area. Um, why am I doing these videos? Um, I am a big, big believer in transparency. And I get the feeling that, especially when it comes to knitwear design, I would, I personally, as a knitter, I would really, really love to see a lot more behind the scenes, a lot more of the process. Before I started designing, I thought I had a very good understanding of how network design actually works. And I thought I, I had that because of my work over at Making Stories where we publish knitting patterns. Sure this, I didn't, I had no idea. Um, and I, for, for some reason I thought, hey, it would actually be quite nice to just allow other people, mainly knitters, but also maybe other budding network designers or maybe even more established network designers to allow insight into my processes. And I believe that not a lot of people do that. And um, 
I have a hunch as to why. I have the impression that especially over the last year or two, there have been quite a few incidences where people have claimed that other people have stolen their knitting patterns, um, be it other independent designers or larger companies. And in quite a lot of the cases, especially when it came to creative ripoff of larger, like by larger companies of independent knitwear designers, that was it was very obvious that that was the case. Um, but I also realized that quite a lot of knitwear designers don't really share their process because of fear that other people might copy them and copy their ideas. Um, I don't have that fear, partly because I don't really expect any of any of this. Knitwear design right now is just a creative outlet for me. Um, we'll go into what that means in a minute. Um, but I'm not um, attached to any sort of financial outcome, for example, to this, which I think makes it easier for me to share a little bit of behind the scenes. Also, if you see any of these ideas and you want to steal it, go ahead, steal it. Try to write up a pattern. Try to put it on Ravelry. Try to sell it to my audience because I trust my audience. I trust you guys. You guys, if you want to buy from me, you're going to buy from me and not from anyone else. So honestly, I'm not afraid of anyone stealing my patterns. If you want to see my patterns, go ahead, see my patterns. <laughs> Fine for me. The pattern itself is not everything that, that like, is, I mean, it's not a central part of my identity, right? And it's not... Yeah, so um, so there's that. Um, that's um, why I decided to start doing these videos. Now, as to what you can expect from these videos, as I said, it's all about knitwear design. I started um, designing a few, maybe two months ago or one and a half months ago. Um, and so I just thought it would be nice to take you along. I want to talk about everything from what inspires me to stitch dictionaries, to resources that I come across, to my work process, to showing you how I'm working and what I'm working on. I have no idea where this is going to develop into. Um, if I'm going to do this regularly, I don't know, every week, every other week, and then just show you what I've been working on or answer questions. So if you have any ideas or if there is something in particular you would, wanna, you would want me to talk about, just leave a comment down below and I'd happily take that into consideration. As I said in the beginning, this is not a how-to, so don't expect any, I don't know, any great advice um, other than what's working for me right now. Um, you can also not expect any edits because this is live and this is going on to my YouTube channel as it is unedited. Um, so as I said, if you want to have something edited and polished, there's my podcast. If you want to have how-to videos, there's my Patreon. This is really just a behind-the-scenes view of what I'm doing in terms of knitwear designs. So let's start and talk a little bit <laughs> after this very, very, very long intro. Let's start and talk a little bit about um, how I actually got to storage designing. I've always, always, always said that I don't want to do knitwear design. Um, I've knit now, I mean, I learned to knit about 20 years ago and I've knit more, well, more or less full time, but it's my preferred craft of choice now for five years, maybe a little bit longer. Um, and um, during that entire time, I always said that I didn't want to dabble in knitwear design. And the major reason for that was that knitting was such a, um, relief for me it was something that wasn't tied to anything that had to do with my job when I was still working for other people or now with anything of my business it was purely fun and I wanted to keep it fun I wanted to keep it light and the thing that I can come back to every night that doesn't have any expectations attached to it and for the longest time um that really, I really didn't have any desire to dabble in knitwear design. In addition to that, I also felt a little bit bad because I do have quite a few knitwear designers, both in my Patreon and in my um, coaching. And um, I thought, well, I mean, if I start knitwear design, 
then I might be encroaching on their space and I don't really know how they feel about it if they think that I'm using something that we've talked about to my advantage, which I sincerely don't. And uh, if you're one of my coaches and you're watching this and you ever have the feeling that, um, I don't know, there's something inappropriate about what I'm doing, please just let me know because that is never, never, ever the intention. Um, so that was the status quo for, for the longest, longest time. And then a few things happened. One thing was that I've been running the businesses that I run now for over two years. And it's come to a point where a lot of it is now more about professionalizing, about putting structures into place. It's about putting processes into place. It's about hiring people. And it's not that much anymore about creative outlets, um, which is totally fine. But for example, my project back label, that was very much a creative outlet at the beginning for me. I just wanted to work with my hands and I wanted to have something that wasn't attached to, I don't know, any business value. It is now. It's an essential part of my livelihood. I need to sell an amount of bags every month to make a part of my rent or make my rent. And um, over the course of the last few months, it's just felt as if, I was lacking another creative outlet. I was lacking something that was I was just doing for fun, just for joy. All of the stuff that I was doing was stuff that I had either been doing for quite a few years, like knitting for myself, or that I was doing in a professional capacity or in a work capacity, not in a professional capacity. We'll go into that in a little later, but in a work capacity. And I didn't really get super unhappy, but I am or was on the brink of burning out because I just felt that there wasn't anything else other than work in my life. And for some reason, I thought, hey, I just need something that engages me both intellectually and creatively. And that something could maybe be network design. So not with any ideas behind um, integrating that in my business or anything, right? Um, just just as a creative slash intellectual outlet. So that's been in the back of my mind. And then I got, I was very fortunate to um, be part of the release giveaway of one of my favorite books. And Chloe is also a knitter and she teamed up, she and her publisher Putnam Books teamed up with Prince and Co to give a select amount of knitters, to give a select group of knitters um, a project quantity of Quince and Co chickadee to make something inspired by the book. So I got this project quantity and um, I thought for a long, long time that I was going to do a shawl with it, um, but from a different person's um, pattern. But it never really felt right. So when I wanted to cast on, I just decided, okay, I'm just going to look at a stitch dictionary and um, pick a stitch pattern and then just do a simple triangular shawl with that. And um, so that's how my first design started. Um, I don't have it here, I'm in San Francisco right now, I'm not in Berlin, otherwise I would show you. But that is the first time that I actually consciously decided to do something from scratch that maybe could serve as a pattern. Now, um, I might talk about this shawl in a later episode or video of this, um, of this series because the shawl is not a prime example about how I want to go about knitwear design, but it is more an example of how not to do things. Still, it got me, it, it made me realize that I wanted that that was fun. That that was something that I really wanted to dabble more in. And then just one day I was looking at my stash and I was caking up a few yarns because I was running out of projects. Um, and I saw a yarn that was dyed by a friend of mine. I was like, yep, I'm just gonna do sock design for that yarn. Just like that. And I was like, Okay, where did that come from? I have no idea. So um, yeah, that's how I got started with my very first sock design, um, which I'm just gonna put on sock lockers right now so that I can so that I can show you. Um, so uh, that's a little bit, that's how I got started um, with the entire um, design thing. Now, <laughs> the thing that I that I also wanted to talk about in today's video um, is something that I 
alluded to earlier, and that is this thing of work versus professional work. Um, wait a second, let me first just show you. So um, this is the very first design that I did, and I can talk about this a little bit more um, in detail later. Um, but there is one thing that I um, that I wanted to talk about before we go a little bit more into what inspired my current design projects um, and what I'm doing with them. And that is how I'm approaching this entire knitwear design part of my work. Um, I said earlier that this is something that uh, right now is I'm just doing out of joy uh, because it's a great creative outlet and it's a wonderful way for me to engage parts of my brain that have been like lying dormant for too long, which is the entire maths part. Um, I have no clue what I'm doing. I've never, before this, I've never written a knitting pattern in my life. Um, I've edited knitwear patterns and I do understand them. I can read them, I can check them for maths, but I and I understand them conceptually and I thought hey this is great right writing will be easy no it's not so I very much feel as if I'm a super super noob at this I'm really really I'm learning so much my brain is exploding it's really it's really fun it's exactly what I wanted it's this thing that you're learning something new and when in life as an adult do you have the opportunity to learn something new that you enjoy that much so that's really what I love about it what I do think and what I want to comment on is that I think a lot of people confuse this learning process with a lack of professionalism and those are two different things I might not have an idea of what I'm doing but how I'm doing it can be and in my case is very professional professional in this case means to me that I'm holding myself to a really high quality standard. So even though I might have no idea of, of how to write up a pattern at first, I have the aim of writing up a really, really, really good pattern. That's what professionalism is for me. And then it's also to do all the things to ensure that I actually reach the end goal. So that might mean a lot of time swatching, a lot of time going through my calculations, spending a lot of time with my tech editor going through patterns, reading a lot of resources, trying to figure out which, what makes a pattern a really good pattern, and then going through a really intense test fitting process. So although I might have no idea of what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to make it the end product as good as possible. And I'm also trying to set up the process so that it actually helps me um in any future designs um so that is really um that is that is that is really one of the things that i wanted to comment on because i do think that we are in an industry that um has severe issues because it comes from a hobby industry and i think a lot of people think that also network design um is well, it can be a hobby, of course it can be a hobby, but I do think that there are very huge differences between doing it as a hobby and doing it professionally. And those differences don't necessarily have something to do with how experienced someone is or not, but rather how they approach their work and what the quality standards are that they hold themselves against. So um, that's a little bit uh, of insight into how I think about uh, approaching this new part of, of what I'm doing. And now let me talk a little bit about the designs that I currently have in the works. So as I, as I said um, before, this is the very first design that I worked on. Um, this is, these are called the Harbor View socks and they are knit in oysters and pearls, all American sock yarn, which is a wonderful blend of Turkey and Columbia sock yarn. It's a two ply, it's a sport weight, so it's thicker than your normal sock yarns. Um, and it's dyed by my friend M in New York with all natural dyes. So this is the yarn that inspired me to do my very first design. Sorry, I just need to take a sip of water. Mm. And I'm um, watching later, but I just wanted to, I thought it would be cool to just tell you a little bit about how I went about designing 
in designing these socks. Um, I hope you find that interesting. So um, I kicked up the yarn and then I started swatching. Swatching is something that I've actually come to enjoy quite a lot over the last years of being a knitter. And it's an integral part, I believe, in when you want to design a pattern. Um, so I started swatching um, uh, with that yarn um, on just my favorite sock needles. I started a simple stockinette swatch in the round because, well, socks are knit in the round, right? So you got to swatch in the round. Um, so I swatched in, in stockinette just to first get a feel for the yarn and get a feel for the fabric so that I could see which, which needle size I wanted to, to actually use um, to get the fabric that I wanted, which was honestly a little bit of a challenge with the yarn, because um, um, no matter how, uh, it, it is quite, um, it's quite as, it's not really stiff. Well, it is kind of stiff. Um, so it is, um, oh, I get the first comments. Hi people, hi Claire, oh my God. Ah, so nice to see that I'm not alone anymore here. Um, so, it was actually quite a, um, it was quite a challenge to come up with a good needle size because the yarn was quite stiff and the fabric that I got was also quite stiff. And that's really something that I don't like. I mean, socks don't need a lot of drain, right? But um, they do need a good feel. Luckily, the yarn and the swatch, they soften up after, after, um, after I blocked them. But it still took me quite a few tries to swatch for, uh, to get the right needle size. Um, so that's the first thing uh, that I did, just a simple stockinette swatch. Um, and then I started looking for stitch patterns. And I have one of my very current favorite oops, um, stitch dictionaries here. And that's this one. And I think everyone and their grandmother has this one. It's called the Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible. And um, it's patterns by Hitomi Shida, which are translated by Gail Rome. Um, and it, it's, it's amazing, like it has so many different patterns. It's actually quite interesting because when you look through this, when you have this book and you look through this and you look at quite a few of the popular patterns that are out there right now, you know where the, people, where the designers have their stitch patterns from. So that's quite, um, I don't know, I just think it's interesting. It's, it's cool to see, I think. Um, so I loved, I love this book um, and I looked through it to see a stitch pattern that I wanted to use. Um, and let me just see if I can find it really quick for you, quickly for you. Um, I actually swatched a few different stitch patterns. Um, I actually swatched a few different stitch patterns. I had the idea first uh, for this sock that I wanted an, um, like an asym asymmetrical, asymmetrical, I think is the word in English, asymmetrical stitch panel over the front of the foot. Um, and, <laughs> but what I, what I started swatching with were all stitch patterns that had a lot more stitches than what would have worked for this. And with the gauge that these, that these socks are knit at, um, I would have, needed a stitch pattern that had like five or six stitches and that I just didn't find anything that that appealed to me so I thought okay I'm just going to start swatching a few different stitch patterns to see what I actually like and what I can make work um, and then I stumbled across this stitch pattern um, which is this really nice combination. It's actually supposed to be with beads. I don't know if you can see this on the screen, but there are some beads here, and there's this really beautiful lace here, and then there are these twisted stitches here. So I started swatching that, and I swatched actually the entire stitch pattern, but I realized that because of the gauge that I had and because of how many rows the stitch pattern actually has, at one of these repeats would have taken up almost the entire sock. So it's like, maybe not. So I decided to just go with a variation on this stitch pattern down here. I adjusted it a little bit um, so that it was repeatable and really got to um, like where, um, where I wanted it to be actually. Um, and uh, yeah, did a swatch with that and calculated um, uh, calculated everything. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on the calculation part right now. I think that might be interesting in a different video. But basically what I started doing is that I started setting up a spreadsheet um, 
with all the calculations that I'm now refining that I can then reuse for all the sock patterns so that I can't, I don't have to redo all the calculations um, every time, right? So that it's a lot with formulas. Um, speaking of uh, spreadsheets, um, I generally think it's a good idea and that's something that I'm also doing to do the pattern writing before you actually start getting the sample. And that's one of the things that really went wrong with the shawl because with the shawl I was like, yeah, you know, I can always figure out what I did later. No, no, I can't. Maybe there are people who can, but I can't. And at Making Stories, this is how we make designers uh, work, that we ask them to write, to swatch, uh, write up the pattern, get a tech edited, knit the sample. So I decided to do that myself as well. And I actually got back up from my lovely friend, Claire, um, who also recommends that approach in her wonderful, wonderful blog. If you don't know it, I'm going to link to it in the show notes below at sistermanton.com. She has amazing, she has an amazing backlog also on articles about how to get started with knitwear design. I highly, highly recommend checking it out. So I decided I was going to do the spreadsheet and the pattern writing before starting to knit the sample. Um, the spreadsheet um, is numbers. I love numbers. It was a lot harder than expected. I was like, it's a sock. What well, can go wrong? It's just a sock. I know how to knit socks. I know how to knit socks. I have no idea how to design socks. Uh, it was good that I had a good understanding of sort of like how to calculate how to calculate different lengths and how to calculate ease and how that all should fit together. But there were some areas where it's like, holy fuck, how how is that how how in particularly everything because these socks have gusset like a heel like a um, a gusset heel turn and heel flap heel right because um, that's my favorite type of heel. Um, yeah, took me a while to figure out how to actually make this. So yeah, um, so I um, did all the calculations in the spreadsheet and then did um, uh, wrote out the pattern and um, basically started knitting. Um, I'm sorry, I'm distracted. Someone started calling me on my phone. Um, so I did all the calculations in the spreadsheet. Um, I'm just going to write down that I'm going to do a separate video on, on the spreadsheet um, stuff. Because uh, I do think that's interesting. And also on the pattern writing. Um, but just to wor walk you through the general process. So did the calculations, wrote up the pattern, and then started knitting the first sock, which was actually this sock. And um, I, um, I knit it up. Um, I had to rip back the heel turn quite a few times because I got the mask so wrong the first time and the second time and the third time. Uh, and then I had sort of figured it out, um, but not really in a formula way. So I had to redo the entire thing again for my next sock pattern. Um, yeah, it wasn't really a lot of fun but it actually worked out in the end. Um, and I knit up the entire sock and I was quite happy that everything else worked out the way that it did. Um, and then I realized, okay, I actually want to have maybe a different toe. These are toe up socks. And I wasn't gonna cut it here and then Kitchener the toe on or something. So it's like, I could do a toe variation, couldn't I? So that's what I did. So this is the second toe. So the second toe has the same sort of like, so you see how here in the ribbing, um, the stitch pattern actually flows into the ribbing, right? This does the same thing here with the toe. Um, so I really, really wanted to have that as a variation so that people could, um, could choose it. Um, it was a happy accident, right? Like, I mean, it wasn't really a happy accident. I actually wanted to have this toe, but I had knit this one. So now it has two variations. Who am I kidding? Me. Um, anyways, 
So I wrote up the variation for this tome, um, sent everything to my tech editor, and um, she sent it back to me uh, with quite a few comments, and I had to do quite a few adjustments. So I did all the adjustments, and when we both felt that it was good and ready to go, I knit up the second sock as a sample um, to test all the new instructions. So there's that. And right now, with this pattern, we are currently, or I am currently in the process um, of starting my test knit. Test knitting is also, I think, a different, um, a different video topic. Um, I'm just writing that down as well, that we can go into uh, in the future. Um, I would also love to hear your thoughts. So if you are watching this and um, you generally like the idea of having the series, would you rather like to have sort of like a regular update specific video approach? So say like um, one video about how to do the math or not how to do the math, but what like um, the math that I'm doing in a particular pattern, one video about the pattern writing of, of a particular pattern. Maybe we could also combine it. Maybe it could be like an update on something, something, and then, I don't know, like a deep dive. Maybe that's what we'll do. I think I like that approach. Cause that's also, I don't really want to go into the how to, I rather want to go into the behind the scenes. Okay. So this was an entire quick rundown of um, how this very first pattern came to be and uh, where we are with it right now. Um, the other thing that I actually wanted to talk about in today's video um, is what inspires me right now um, and maybe show you a few of the things that I have currently um, that I have currently in the works. Because what really inspired me to start this entire design thing um, is a yarn. And I feel that right now I am really just inspired by yarns that I want to convert into a design. And I thought it would be fun just to show you a few of the yarns that I am currently working with. I decided to start with sock designs because socks is actually, I think, something that, um, I mean, it does require a bit of grading if you want to offer your pattern in multiple sizes, which I definitely want. Um, so this one is going to have things and different gauges. So that's why I decided to start to start with socks um, because I thought it would it would be a bit less complicated. I also love knitting them, so so there's that. Um, so a lot of the yarns that I'm going to show you are um, for sock for sock patterns right now. Um, the first yarn that I picked up after I had started designing is um, this little ball here. Let me just show you. Um, and uh, this is Too Cool Wool Fingering, um, which is 100% finished wool. It's a true fingering, a two-ply, pretty tightly twisted, and I am currently transforming that into another sock design. Oops, there's my headphones. So into another sock design. Um, I um, when I started designing, I consciously made a decision that I only wanted to use natural yarns. So I'm not using any nylon yarns, for example, no superwash yarns. That's something that is really, really important to me in my personal making. And because with all my businesses, I've been going more and more into that direction of making very conscious choices about the materials and about the suppliers. I thought it would be a good idea to also just start with the designing at a, in a place that felt true to myself and true to my values. So it's all natural fibers, um, also for the socks, like no nylon, non superwash, nothing. And mostly really smaller companies, smaller producers that I want to support because that's important to me in, a, in my work. So that is the first yarn that I started with, Tuku Wool Fingering in the colorway Upo, which is number 23. And it doesn't show up true to camera. It's more, shows up too warm on the camera. This is more, more like an acid yellow slash mustardy, and I really, really love it. So that's one of the yarns that I'm working with currently. Um, here's, here's the swatch. So that's how it knits up. And I really love it. It's so, I don't know, it's just so, it's rustic, but, and cheapy, but it's really, really good. I really like it. 
So that's the that's the first yarn that I started swatching with. And then um, I had a skein of Whistlebear Cuthbert sock, which is 80% mohair, 20% Wensleydale, both from their own farm. And Whistlebear is a wonderful, wonderful company based in the UK um, and run by Alice and her family. And they do have... Um, um, so they do have their own farm and they get their yarns spun in the UK and then Alice dyes them and they have wonderful strong yarns. And this Cuthbert sock is actually fantastic because the 80% mohair gives makes it so strong it's not even real. Like I have problems breaking this yarn with like I can't break it. I can't freaking break it and it doesn't have a single stitch of plastic, a single, a single thing of nylon in it. And it's so freaking strong. I love it. It also has this gorgeous halo. I don't know if you can see this, but it has this gorgeous halo thingy. Um, so that is another yarn that I swatched with. Um, this is the current swatch that I have. So I want to make transform this into more of a lacy spring-like sock pattern. Um, so you can see a little bit of a lace thingy here. I'm not quite sure yet if that is actually what I want to go with, maybe in a sort of like slightly different outline, but I really, I really like the fabric that it produces and it's this, it's just gorgeous. I love it. So that's the second yarn that I'm working with currently. The third one is also an interesting blend that comes from a company based here in the US and that is Green Mountain Spinnery. And I've long wanted to um, work with some Green Mountain Spinnery yarn. And this is their sock art yarn, um, which is, I believe, 30% tensile um, and 70% wool. Um, and this is just a, it's a gray colorway. And it has this really interesting, it's a two ply, it has this really interesting feel to it. It's a little bit rubbery, a little bit springy, but really, really, I don't know, just for some reason, I really like it. It feels almost sporty. Can a yarn feel sporty? Not like sport weight, but like sporty. I don't know, it feels sporty to me. So um, that's another yarn destined to become a pair of socks. And this is the swatch that I did for it. I don't really know if you can see it, maybe here. Um, so uh, yeah, um, so you can see I have uh, some twisted thingy going on here and like some cable thingy. So this is also going to become um, uh, like a panel on the center of a sock and maybe on the back leg as well. So yeah, there's that. Um, and then I have some other yarns that I picked up at EYF that I haven't swatched with yet, but I just thought would be interesting to share with you. And that is um, Blacker's, Blacker Yarns, Jacob Breed in their four ply. So I have two balls of this and one ball of this. And um, maybe that's something for tonight. Some good old Friday swatching, huh? Maybe. So there's that. Um, those are all the sock thingies that I have currently in the works. And then, because I'm a crazy person, right? Um, I started thinking about sweaters. Yeah. No idea what I'm doing in terms of sock design. I have no idea what I'm doing in terms of sweater design, but hey, let's go make a sweater. That's how I roll. And I have this gorgeous, I have three skeins of this gorgeous mole view bliss space, which is 50% wool, 50% silk most amazing thing in the entire world you guys so swatch with this yesterday holy shit isn't this amazing can you believe it just look at this so cool right okay I need to stop talking about all my swatches so much but this i'm so in love with it so um sweater and then and this is now going to be a bit complicated because Oops, I just dropped the ball of yarn. Be right back. Okay. So I'm just gonna hold it here because it's all attached to the needles and stuff. So this is the last yarn that I brought with me to Cisco that I'm swatching with currently. Um, this is Woolly Mammoth Fibers, a wonderful, wonderful indie dyer. Hi, Emma, if you may be watching this at some point, uh, based in Northern Ireland, who only works with natural yarns and natural dyes. And this is her 100% Wednesday Dale base. 
look at that halo. So cool, uh, which I'm also watching for a sweater design right now and I have two colors of this and I'm thinking stripes. That would be really cool. So um, right now I'm really inspired by the yarn as opposed to, I know that there are a lot of knitwear designs inspired by all sorts of things, right? Like um, I love work, for example, that is that um, um, that Nitsonic is doing with her um, with her playbooks. She just came out with a new one um, that are all about color work, for example. Or I love what Sweater Spotter Anna Maltz is doing, um, who right now is really inspired by all sorts of techniques, including Moral Eye, uh, one thing that she invented. Um, so I don't think there's anything right or wrong with like how you get inspired. And I'm expecting that this is really going to change also over the next few months, weeks, years. I have no idea what I get inspired by in the future. Right now it is really just all these beautiful yarns that are there and what I want to do with them. And then just looking through stitch dictionaries and trying to find good stitch patterns that work with yarns. And right now this is very much this part of the design process, matching stitch patterns with yarns is very much an intuitive thing. And I think that is really something where I still have a lot to learn is how to best judge which stitch patterns can go with which types of yarns. Cause it is quite different, you know, like if you have a yarn that is like, like this, like the whistle bear that has an incredible halo. I don't even think you can see that that well, can you? But it has an incredible halo to it, right? Versus you have something like this um, from Green Mountain Spinnery. It's a lot tighter, you know, it doesn't have the halo. Um, I think I need to learn a little bit better which stitch patterns work well with both of them. I do have the gut feeling um, and right now it's, it's sort of proven correct or like okay um but yeah so this is something that i'm really excited to develop over the future a better understanding of which yarns work well with which with which stitch patterns and how to combine them and also how to um maybe just stitch patterns um so yeah um there's that I do think that we're quite at the end of what I had planned for this very, very first video of the behind the scenes of what I am currently doing in terms of network design, a little outlook on what I'll be doing in the next few days and weeks. I am currently, I have written up another sock pattern um, or let's, let's go into in order of things. So this little baby is going into test netting on Monday. Um, which I'm really excited about. And then I have to do, do a little bit of layouting, um, a lot bit of layouting, am I kidding? Currently knitting up the first sample form, which is um, in the person I want the rest of the sock pattern so that I can get started on tech editing and sample knitting and test knitting and then potentially also the sweater patterns. So those are the plans for my next few weeks. Um, I do have a, like, a list of things that I want to talk about in upcoming videos. Um, one of them is stitch dictionaries and just sharing a few resources that I discovered that are really, really great, especially when you're just starting out that I thought would be really that, that were really helpful for me and I thought would be helpful to share as well. Um, and then um, also just showing you progress on my designs and maybe going into um, what I'm currently working on in terms of, am I in the middle of test knitting? Am I in the middle of pattern writing? Am I in the middle of something, something? Uh, just going into detail there. So if you have anything in particular that you want me to talk about, Again, this is not a how-to, this is a behind the scenes slash what am I learning slash what are things that I think might be helpful for you too. Um, so if there are any questions that you have for me, if there are any topics that you'd like me to address in future videos for this series, please do comment below. Again, if you want to um, really go into deeper how-to stuff, for our creative businesses, Patreon is the way to go. There will be a link in the down bar below. And then also, if you want to find me on the social media black hole, I am Hannah on the road on Instagram, which is the best way to contact me. And I have 
two websites, havalisahafakamp.com for my coaching business and hlh-designs.com for everything related to project tax and network design. So those are the places that you can find me on the interwebs. It was super fun to do this. Um, I hope you guys liked it. If you liked it, do give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to stay up to date um, with future live videos, I think the best way, I'm actually not entirely sure, but I think if you do subscribe, you might get a notification. So that might be something to try if you're, if you are curious and stressed about that. Um, but yeah, generally, I would be very happy to get a thumbs up if you like what you saw, if you want to see more of this and subscribe. And yeah, I think that is it for today. Now I'm going to go and get myself another cup of coffee coffee, and then settle in with the heel turn that I just fucked up again yesterday night. Alrighty, loves. See you next time. Bye.